Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the adjusting journal entries for accruing expenses. So I'm going to start off with just a primer here. When we talk about accruals and how they differ from deferrals, deferrals typically involve a journal entry occurring during the period because of some sort of economic activity, and then a, a partial or full reversal of that journal entry at the end of the period. And that's the adjusting entry. You get to the end of the period, you're reviewing your financials, and you say, hey, um, we need to back part of this out. All right, that's typically how deferrals work. There's a starting entry, then there's the adjustment that comes later. With accruals, there is not typically a starting journal entry that is reversed later. Typically with accruals, it's just a matter of some sort of economic activity occurred, but it hasn't been recorded yet. And so in this um, uh, video, I'm specifically talking about accrued expenses. And so I'll talk about some of the reasons that your, uh, your expenses may have occurred, but not actually been recorded in just a minute. But again, just going through this, original journal entry, there is no original journal entry. There's been a cost to the company, but it hasn't been recorded. And because it hasn't been recorded, well, you haven't paid it either, right? Typically, when you incur a cost, um, if you pay it on the spot, you know you've paid it, you record it. If you haven't even recorded it, uh, that means you really probably haven't been billed for it. it means you probably haven't paid it either. So typically, it, it goes in hand in hand. Cost's been incurred, but cash has not actually been paid, nor has it been recorded. So the adjusting entry is you get to the end of the period, you do your trial balance, you look at your financials, and you say, hey, wait a minute, where's this cost? This thing happened but we don't have a cost recorded for it yet. And so what we're gonna do at that point is we're gonna record the expense because we know we incurred that, 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 that cost and we're gonna create a liability for the cash that will be paid out later related to that expense. All right, why does this happen? Salaries and wages is the most common one. Typically employees work, they get paid with some sort of delay. So they might work for a period and then a week later, they get paid, or two weeks later, they get paid. Well, in that time lag between when the employees work and when they get paid, um, or even in the middle of an employee pay cycle, you might hit the end of an accounting period. And you have to say, hey, wait a minute, we've got to make sure all of our expenses for this period were recorded. And if your employees worked, but you haven't cut them a paycheck yet, nor have you even done the math to figure out how much have they worked, because you haven't put in the payroll, um, you know, you haven't updated the payroll for the period yet, you're going to have to figure out, well, how much did they work? How much expense did we incur from those employees, even though they haven't been paid yet? And you have to make sure that you record that. Interest on debt is another really common one. If you borrow money every day that passes, you're racking up interest owed on that money. But it's too cumbersome every single day to go into the accounting system and say, yep, interest expense, six cents today interest expense, six cents tomorrow, interest expense, six cents Thursday, right? Instead, you typically just wait till the end of the accounting period, figure out how much interest expense you racked up over the course of that period, and as an adjusting journal entry, you record that interest expense along with a payable that you need to pay that off later. Utilities, another really common one. Utility bills usually come the month after you've incurred the cost. Think about it logistically. You're using electricity from, say, January 1 to January 31. Well, the electricity company doesn't know how much electricity you've used for that month until January 31 is over. And at that point, they'll cut you a bill, and they'll mail it to you, and that'll probably be sometime in February. And then that bill will have a payment window on it, maybe due by end of month, maybe not due till March. So there's a lot of delay between the different pieces of communication. But the fact of the matter is, if you use the electricity, in January, well, you've got to record an expense for January. So that typically comes up as an adjusting entry. Once you know how much you've used, you go ahead and you book that amount, but you book it in that current period, in the, in the period that's ending. And taxes is a similar way. You owe taxes to your government for every transaction that you conduct, typically, if it's a, like a sales transaction or something of that nature. And of course, you may not be literally recording the entry for taxes every day. You may do it at the end of the quarter when you estimate your quarterly payment or something. So at that point, you would do an adjusting entry for all the taxes that you've technically supposed to have been recording every single day of the period, but again, too cumbersome 
just wait till the end, record it all at once as an adjustment while you're doing the adjusting journal entries. Let's see an example. On March 1st, Flyer Corps signed a three-month note payable for $5,000. The note has an annual interest rate of 12%, paid each February 28. Flyer Corps closes its books on March 31st. All right, so in this case, there is something that kicks off the need for an adjusting entry, and that is the company borrowed some money, and they borrowed that money on March 1st. But them borrowing the money isn't the thing we have to adjust. That's just the, the event that kicked it all off. What we have to adjust is how much interest do we owe on this money after one month, right? They borrowed it on March 1st. The books are closing on March 31st. So how much money did, do they now owe in interest as a result of this debt? Now, first, that's going to require a little math. We've got a $5,000 note payable. That note payable um, is generating interest at 12% annually, so per year. So let me go ahead and pull out my calculator. All right, so 5,000 times 0.12 means we're racking up $600 in interest per year. But remember, it's only been one month, so we're gonna go times 1 12th, a partial year, one month of a year, or divide by 12 is another way to think about that, means we're racking up $50 in interest per month. All right, so when we get to March 31st, we're gonna book an adjusting journal entry, March 31, and we've gotta record that interest expense. We've incurred that cost, one month of interest. We just haven't recorded it yet, $50. What's the credit that goes with this? Well, we're gonna owe that $50 to someone later on, specifically on February 28th, and so we're gonna record interest payable, a liability for that amount that we owe. And that's it, that's our adjusting journal entry. Now, hypothetically, what if we had not done this? Like, why is this a big deal to do these journal entries? Well, let's think about it for a minute. From an income statement standpoint, had we not recorded this adjusting journal entry, we would not have recorded this interest expense, which means our expenses would have been too low and therefore our net income would have been too high. So we would have overstated our net income if we had not recorded this. Also, this is a liability on the balance sheet, interest payable. Had we not recorded this, we would understate our liabilities. So overstating net income and understating liabilities, that is a dangerous combination because we're essentially lying to investors and we're saying, hey, we made more profit than we actually did. And we're telling them, hey, we owe less debt than we actually do. And you don't want to skew investors the wrong way in overvaluing your company. That's essentially what you've done here is overvalued your company. And that's why these are super important to do. Here's another one for you, just to give us some extra, extra credit at this. Sierra Corporation pays its employees 45,000 in salaries for each five day work week. It paid salaries for work performed through Wednesday, October 26th, and will not pay salaries again until November 8th. However, the books close on October 31st. All right, so here's one of the situations where the books are closing in the middle of a pay cycle for employees. They have been paid as of Wednesday, October 26th. So you can assume any journal entries associated with that payment are already done. However, Thursday the 27th and Friday the 28th, those are both work days, right? And then you've got, um, what, Saturday the 29th, Sunday the 30th, and then you've got Monday the 31st. So. Between this date of Wednesday, October 26th, when we recorded journal entries because we went ahead and paid our employees, they have now worked three more days until we've gotten to the end of the period. We have to expense those three days of work, even though we're not gonna pay them until November 8th. So how do we do that? Well, on October 31st, we are gonna record salaries and wages expense, Almost said the wrong thing there. How much is it gonna be? 
Well, we know what the employees make per five-day work week, and we know that they worked three days. So we are going to take that 45,000. I'm going to go ahead and put this in red, separate my calculations so they stand out. 45,000 per five days. And we're going to say times they worked three out of five. So they're going to earn three-fifths of that. Pull out my calculator again. 45,000 times three, whoop, I put divided. 45,000 times three-fifths is $27,000. So that's per three days. And that's what we're going to expense, the three days worth of work. Now, what's the matching credit? Well, we're expensing the employees because they did the work. We will eventually have to pay them this money. And so the credit is salaries and wages payable, a liability for what we're going to have to pay later. So that's your adjusting journal entry based on the information you know, something that got expensed but wasn't recorded during the period. Now, again, hypothetical, what if the company had not performed the adjusting entry? Well, all of these are going to be the same thing. If we don't record this expense, we're going to overstate our income. If we don't record this liability, we're going to understate our liabilities. Combined, we're basically overstating our value for investors. That's the same thing that happened on the last slide. That's the same thing that's happening on this slide. That's the same thing that's going to happen with any accrued expense. If you don't record it, you're going to overstate your value, which you definitely don't want to do because that's going to open you up to potential lawsuits. All right, that's it for adjusting journal entries for accrued expenses. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.